How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Friday here on the show, and you know what that means. we got a very busy weekend. The Ric Flair's final match pay-per-view coming up on Sunday. SummerSlam coming up on Saturday. GCW, New Japan. We got SmackDown tonight. We got Rampage tonight. And much, much more. So we got a lot of lineups to get into on the show today. We'll tell you what's coming up. What are you going to watch, everybody? 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Let me know what you're watching this weekend, what you're interested in, and uh, how you think SummerSlam may or may not change with Vince McMahon out of the picture. And Triple H now taking over the Vince McMahon role. We have also got tons of updates on AEW injuries. Who is hurt? Who is not? Who is cleared? Obviously, it is not an extensive list because there's a lot of people hurt. And uh, and there's a lot of people cleared. So we'll give you some updates on all of that. Plus, a lot of questions have been asked about whether or not uh, AEW contracts can be extended in the case of injury. And uh, we have the answer as a result of uh, Dave Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. So we'll tell you about that here today. We've also got uh, ratings, AEW Dynamite ratings. We've got updates on Sasha and Naomi. And we have got plenty more. Once again, if you want to text us, 425-780-7566 is the text message line. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Mike Semper Vivi is going to join us after the break, and we'll kick it off with a look at this coming weekend, because there is definitely a lot to talk about. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, it is a very busy weekend here, as SummerSlam is taking place on Saturday. That's tomorrow, everybody. We got SummerSlam, and at this moment, we have eight matches announced for the show. Obviously, there is a uh, SmackDown show tonight. Did I say SmackDown SummerSlam? I think am, I you said my, uh, am I on game today? Didn't SmackDown tonight, SummerSlam? SummerSlam's tomorrow. Anyway, Logan Paul versus The Miz. Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown women's title. Bobby Lashley versus Theory for the United States title. Pat McAfee, Happy Corbin. The Mysterios versus the Judgment Day in a no-squalification match. Remember how cool that uh, Rey Mysterio thing was on on Monday? And he got to talk about his career, and his son was there, and they celebrated, and everything was great, and then he got beat up. I wonder if they're actually going to do that uh, Dominic turn. If the Dominic turn doesn't happen on SummerSlam, I don't think it's happening anytime soon. But otherwise... We have got Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title. The Usos versus the Street Profits for the tag team titles. With Jeff Jarrett as special guest referee. And we've got Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, last man standing for the undisputed Universal title. And of course, Austin Theory has vowed that he will be cashing in after the match. So I guess we'll... See what happens tomorrow. It is the first ever post-Vince McMahon SummerSlam. So what will we go with? What will we change? What programs will we start? We're going to see tomorrow night. You excited, Mike? Sure. Totally excited about everything. You sound you, like it. Yeah. Who do you think Seth Rollins' opponent is going to be? I talked about it the other day. I think it's going to be Ziggler. Did we talk about it on this show? Yeah. Uh, sure did. Okay. Yeah. I hope it's Kevin sure Owens. Did. I don't think it will be, but I would I hope we'll it would see. be Kevin Owens. I'm ready for a Kevin Owens breaking away from Ezekiel and, and Elias and all that sort of stuff. I think you've gone as far as you could do with that. He's been gone for a little while. Why not? You know, if you want to shake things up, there's a guy that you can rely on. He's a guy that's willing to do anything for you. He's a guy that's over. 
So to insert him into some sort of mix on both shows, preferably because in my magical fantasy land at some point, we will be seeing Walter on the regular on Raw and all that sort of stuff, like mix it all back up again. But at the very least, you know, Owen's coming back. Uh, He and Rollins would be fun for sure. Well, let's talk about these uh, these AEW injuries because I got a lot of updates here for everybody. So first off, AEW is able to extend a wrestler's contract when they've been out of action due to injury. Dave Meltzer addressed the issue Friday's edition of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. If you're wondering if, when guys are out of action, if AEW can extend their contract like WWE does, their contracts do allow for that, and it has happened, he wrote. Probably the most notable example of WWE freezing a contract involves Rey Mysterio in May of 2014. Mysterio's contract was set to expire, but WWE extended it by a year due to the time he missed while injured. The company eventually granted him his release in February of 2015. He began performing for AAA and later Lucha Underground afterwards. So yeah, he actually took years off of, of WWE, but still celebrated his 20 years of WWE on Raw Monday. WWE's ability to freeze a contract also applied to Brian Danielson's status with the company in 2016. And, uh, of course, the whole situation there was Vince McMahon told Danielson he wouldn't release him. Worse, he couldn't even sit patiently by, let his injuries heal, get in shape, and wait for his contract to expire. WWE, in its contracts, has the right that if a wrestler is injured for a considerable length of time, they can freeze the time frame of his or her contract. The time left on the contract does not start rolling until they are ready to work in the ring and fulfill it as an active wrestler. Daniel's time was uh, frozen on his contract until he could return. But the Ice Age would never end since he would never be cleared to return and fulfill that time left. So really the only way he got out of his contract was he actually got himself cleared to return, finished out the contract, and then left and went to AEW. So that was the situation with Brian Danielson. And, uh, And so here we go. Ready? Dante Martin, according to PW Insider, has a knee injury. He was on crutches backstage and at the hotel. Severity of the injury and Martin's timetable for return is unknown. Of course, if you watched the match, he was selling his, his ankle and his knee afterwards. And uh, and so, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's hurt. Dax Harwood has a torn labrum. And the match against the Briscoes at death before dishonor made things worse. Dax Harwood is the latest AW wrestler working with a torn labrum, wrote Dave. After the Briscoes match, he came out of it with a swollen eye, a stiff neck, and a bad shoulder that was made worse. Daddy Magic is out of action with a shoulder injury. Also suffered at Blood and Guts. The word is he is going to attempt to rehab it and not undergo surgery. So that's where he was and wasn't on Wednesday night for that Dynamite show. We've also got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly both still out of action. So even though they announced that uh, they were going to return on the show Wednesday, they're returning in a television role, but neither of them have been cleared. So they're, they're, uh, they're really making sure that Adam Cole is 100% before he comes back because he was injured in the Joe match, and then he came back and was immediately injured again. He already had a torn labrum, and they don't want him coming back and immediately getting injured again. So he's going to be out still for a while. I was told he is getting better. And then uh, Kyle O'Reilly also is probably going to be out for a little while. So lots of injuries. That's, uh, That's the latest there. And uh, on the subject of injuries, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, apparently this this most recent set of of WWE tryouts, this was the uh, set of tryouts where a lot of NIL folks showing up trying to get deals and uh, no independent wrestlers allowed, anything of that nature. The word is that this is probably the last time this is going to happen. They're not getting rid of the NIL program, but the... This idea of no independent wrestlers, all NIL folks, Lash Legend and folks like that, you know, Ivy Nile and um, I think some of the... uh, um, Anyway, point of this is there were a lot of injuries at this set of tryouts. There were were several concussions. There were a lot of uh, folks trying out that got hurt. Um, It's a blind leading the blind. I mean... 
So anyway, it looks like the uh, the days of uh, all uh, college athletes, all attempting to get NIL deals, no independent wrestlers. It appears that's probably over. And uh, with Vince McMahon out of the picture, hopefully we'll go back to the sort of recruitment we were doing when Triple H was in charge of NXT. And he was open to using big names on the indie scene, open to using guys from Ring of Honor or that came from Ring of Honor or New Japan or whatever. So, yeah, I heard a lot of injuries. I heard a lot of them, quite frankly, sucked. And that it was, uh, yeah. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouths, but from what I heard, it sounded like it was a disaster. So that's the update on the latest WWE tryout. At some point, they're going to have to have a come to Jesus on the NIL things anyway, because they signed the Cavinder sisters, who everybody signed because they were really pretty and they were basketball players at, oh God, what was it? Stanford, I believe, so somewhere out west in the, in the Pac-12. And... I figured they would break him out for WrestleMania or something like that. And just to say they were there or and they never did that. And you're paying these folks with the hope that after college, they're going to want to choose to become WWE wrestlers. And it's like, there's something about it that just doesn't make any sense to me because there's a lot of this where it's like, I mean, if I'm a high school kid going into college and I'm in college, and I'm an athlete, and I can now pimp my likeness out. I think that's great. But for WWE, like, you're going to have to see a return on this. And I don't know if it's <laughs> – we'll have to see. I mean, they, they signed – what was the kid from Oklahoma State who left school, uh, A.J. Ferrari or whatever his name is? You, you know, he's on an NIL deal. They, they have a couple, but it's like, why even do this? Why not just wait till their college career is done and then try to recruit them that way the same way you've always done it? I don't see where... Because I don't want AEW hiring kids. them. But the whole thing is you're signing a college kid for their NIL. There's nothing in that deal that says they have to become WWE wrestlers or they even have to try out. Nothing. So there's really no way for them to be stopped. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So we also this weekend have Ric Flair's last match coming up on Sunday. StarCast is going on right now. It's all weekend. We've got the roast of Ric Flair tonight. Saturday, it's panels. Brian Danielson, Claudio, Horseman Reunion, Bret Hart talking SummerSlam 92, we got the former Paige Foley, Nash Hardy, and more. Pictures, autographs, convention. Black Label Pro is running on Friday. GCW is running on Friday. New Japan is running on Saturday. Ric Flair's last match on Sunday. Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Tickets on sale, $39 at rickflairslastmatch.com. Matches featuring MLW, NWA, AAA, Impact, New Japan, Ring of Honor, AEW, and more. And I believe that, uh, well, I won't say anything more about that. But Ric Flair's LastMatch.com is a place to go if you want to watch all of the videos they have done building it up. The match is on Sunday, Satellite, Cable, Fight.TV. You watching that show, Mike? What show is that, Brian? Ric Flair's last match. Oh, you know, there were so many shows taking place. I wasn't sure if you meant the Black Label, Pro, the Game Changer show, show or Ric Flair's last match. But yes, at some point... Between you I and Vinny the last out. couple of days, holy smokes. Holy I'll smokes. I'll be checking out life. Ric Flair's last match right. at some point. Look, I got to get caught back up on the G1 Climax. So there's going to be, at some point... In the next couple of days, I'm going to have to watch SmackDown and Rampage. We got SummerSlam is obviously a must-see because of doing this show. So that stuff I got to get caught back up on first when it comes to the G1. Then I'll worry about New Japan Strong and Black Label and GCW, both of which have very good shows all lined up for this weekend, too. All right, so a couple of other notes here. We'll go to some feedback here in a bit. A women's championship coming to New Japan Stardom and New Japan have announced creation of the IWGP Women's Championship, the first ever title holder to be decided at the joint New Japan Stardom show 
on November 20th. They clarified on the Stardom English Language Twitter account that the belt will primarily be defended at New Japan events, but could also be defended on larger stardom shows. The IWGP women's title will not replace the World of Stardom and Wonder of Stardom titles as the promotion's top belts. This comes on the heels of New Japan's announcement earlier this month that the company will begin to feature women's matches on New Japan shows in the U.S. with an eye on a genderless and more integrated scene in Japan. The company also announced earlier this month the joint New Japan Stardom show in November will feature, quote, around two mixed tag team matches. So it sounds like this IWGP women's title, it sounds like it will largely be a New Japan strong title. I don't know that for sure. And then occasionally on the bigger New Japan shows, it will be defended there. So, hey, listen, people have been asking about this for a long time. And if you've got the opportunity to uh, have a title and you can use some stardom wrestlers, and really it's just kind of like the uh, the New Japan Strong Openweight title. I mean, you can use people from anywhere. I mean, if you can get some of the AEW women on the New Japan Strong shows, you can get women from Mexico, the indie scene, Impact. I mean, you can have a pretty solid women's division, actually probably a great women's division, on a on uh, New Japan Strong with this new IWGP Women's Title, so November twentieth is the day this champion will be crowned. There's such a huge hole that opened up with Shimmer not running that somebody, I wish with a whole lot of money uh, that wants to throw it at wrestling, would actually come up with some sort of concept in the same thing in the same way that Dave Parazak did and come up with that women's promotion because, boy, that would help things out, too. And I thought possibly because it was Mayu Iwatani who had the SWA title, which is one of stardom's many belts, but that's the belt that gets a lot of international play because whoever holds the title, the person who holds it, from whatever country they're from no one else from that country can challenge for it so we've seen you know this is where dewdrop as viper held that title tony storm beat io shirai for jamie haters had that belt be Priestley, and i thought they could actually take that title and make that the iwgp stardom title they've decided to not do that but that's okay because if this becomes a way where we see at least one at least one women's match on a New Japan Strong show, and there are women that are able to get into that program and maybe learn some things from the New Japan coaches, I think that would be really, really cool. And and whatever help they can obviously get from, you know, whoever stardom brings over, because I'm not sure how that's going to work, whether it's just going to be single wrestlers or coaches or however that's going to work. I More synergy, the better when it comes to women's wrestling in this country, especially with that big vacuum being... Somebody needs to fill it. And unfortunately, I don't know who can, but this is stardom coming over to the States is probably going to be our best bet. We've also got this. Last Saturday's Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor pay per view brought in 36,100 buys, according to Dave Meltzer in the new Observer Newsletter, which you can get, by the way, at WrestlingObserver.com. Read the issue yourself as a subscriber. And uh, if you like it, you can also get all of our podcasts, as well as 13,000 archived podcasts, well over 1,000 archived Observer Newsletter. Literally, virtually every Observer Newsletter from 1991 through today is now archived. we got uh, maybe a year or two remaining, but other than that, it's, it's, uh, it's all up there. 27,000 of the buys came from streaming, 9,100 via traditional cable providers. This would be a big jump from Supercard of Honor, which did 19,200. So uh, almost doubled the number of buys. Show was also a, uh, the the, uh, April show was also available for Honor Club subscribers. This show was not. It was also on a Saturday night against no big pro wrestling competition, while the Supercard show was in a busy Friday night during WrestleMania weekend. Meltzer also had the following notes about the crossover with AEW pay-per-view buyers. Of the fans who purchased Supercard of Honor, 
39% also purchased Revolution. 68% of the Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor buyers also purchased Forbidden Door. And 68% also purchased Double or Nothing. So that would mean that about... So for those of you, you know, that are wondering, well, how many people that are watching, you know, Dynamite actually know anything about Ring of Honor or are willing to buy Ring of Honor or anything like that? I mean, I think we can safely say, you know, at least uh, a third of them probably have little, if any, interest in uh, Ring of Honor and maybe significantly more because that's free television as opposed to looking at pay-per-view buyers. Digital number is important because the exclusive domestic distributor was Bleach Report, which is a system owned by Discovery. The show generated probably in excess of $400,000 for that system. The idea is that number would seem a positive in Tony's attempt to make a deal with Discovery for a weekly television show based on the idea they can make money for Discovery doing multiple pay-per-view shows a year along with the value of the programming itself. So... For those of you wondering, well, why was he, you know, I, I don't like watching all this Ring of Honor promotion and building up Ring of Honor pay-per-views on my Dynamite show. Well, there's a there's a business reason for it. Although, you know, as I mentioned on the Brian Vinny show yesterday, uh, everyone was raving about Wednesday's Dynamite, and there was a big difference. There was a big difference. Wednesday's Dynamite is compared to anything over the last two months. And that is, it was the first show where they had nothing else to promote. They didn't have to promote a New Japan Ring of Honor Forbidden Door. They didn't have to promote a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. They only had to promote AEW. It was an AEW Dynamite show. There was nothing else on it. And it was a very, very focused show. They got to shoot a bunch of angles to set the table for the rest of the summer. They got to build up some things to uh, head towards... The uh, all-out show. So uh, that's, I think, one of the main reasons, besides the two great matches, that it was such a good show on Wednesday night. Yeah, I agree with that. And if Tony really wants to do something for Discovery, it would be coming up with an alternative solution for Bleacher Report because it is not fun to try to order with them the replay 24 hours after. And a lot of the... It's just, I don't know what it is with, with Turner, and maybe they were waiting for the Discovery deal to go through. They need to step it up, because for any negatives of Peacock and any streaming option, for that matter, man, they got to figure out something, something for them, because that would help, I think, immensely as well, too. You know, it just, most people don't want to order on, on pay-per-view, traditional pay-per-view anymore. But a lot of times it's easier, and a lot of people have had issues with Bleacher Report. That's what they've had to fall back to do, unless they have, you know, the IP gimmick where they can then go ahead and order through Fight TV. So, you know, Dave's usually on in this segment. He's not on today. But you know what? 15,000 words on Vince McMahon, an incredible, incredible, article in this week's Observer Newsletter. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Marcel says, Brian, you could tell it was an AEW-only show because Excalibur got through promoting everything without having to reach for the oxygen tank. That's true! <laughs> he only had to promote Dynamite uh, and Rampage. Imagine how much easier his life would be if they didn't tack on an extra name to every single TV show. Like, I mean, Fight for the Fallen, Fighter Fest. Uh, what's the new one we got coming up? What's the, the rumble at the... Quake at the Lake. The Quake at the Lake. I just... I, uh... Sure, why not? If you did Beach Break in Cleveland, which gave us the incredible moment of Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs standing by the lake in ski gear, and uh, that was, uh, I just, I don't, I don't get why everything has got to be subtitled now. You know, I could understand if it was a pay-per-view, but people are kind of pushing back on that when it comes to all the indies out there who name their their shows after album titles and movies and lyrics from songs and everything else. I don't know why AEW seems to be doing it every week as well. Fight for the Fallen on Wednesday. 976,000 viewers, up 7% from the prior week. Largest audience for Dynamite since July 6th, 18 to 49. Second on cable, 0.33, up 3%. MLB game between the New York Yankees and New York Mets finished first with a .50 rating and 2.1 million viewers. Dynamite even or up in every ratings category. Biggest increase, males 12 to 34. Huge increase of 53.9% to a .20 rating. 
Dynamite's best rating in that category since May 18. Maybe it's 12 to 34 males that don't like all that blood. Is that possible? Mm, Compared to the same week in 2021, Dynamite down 11.9%. They announced a barbed wire match, barbed wire everywhere last week, and those 12 to 34-year-old males were squeamish. But they came back this week. That's the soft generation that we've raised. Yes, these (laughs) uh, Generation Z. They they must eat Domino's pizza. They don't have the stomach for it, you know? They don't even cut their uh, their pizzas with a a, a blade anymore. I don't know, they just pull it apart lightly. Just, come on, kids. That's what happened. Nick Gage just ruined everything for them. Twelve to thirty four. As they caught one look at Nick Gage, things have never been the same. WWE you ever been to a baseball to make game, amends. Ryan. Have you? Have you ever been to a baseball game? Yankees Mets could be a preview of the World Series. And I've got to know: Have you ever been to a baseball game? Because I would figure you'd be bored out of your mind, like. 10 seconds into it. I have been to a baseball game. Did you like it? I ate I ate a hot dog, so I enjoyed oh. myself. Was it a vegan With hot dog or was it a real only honest ketchup? Just pork and chicken nasty like real baseball hot dog. Bro, listen, I have never in my life, not one time, a single time ever eaten a vegan meat product. Never. never. Not one time. No. Hmm. Why not? I'm going to eat a wiener. I'm going to eat the real 100% beef version. By the way, we need to seal up some more things about the NDA after the show, but get back to what you were talking about. WWE is expected to make attempts to reconcile with Sasha Banks and Naomi. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't wait. It's kind of up in the air, Dave said. I mean, they're gone. Last I heard was there would be attempts made to reconcile, especially with Vince gone. It's up in the air. I don't think there's anything definite just yet. You know, I read these I read these reports and I mutter under my breath. Just like uh just like on NXT with Kiana James. Is that her name? Kiana James? It's Kiana, Kiana something. James, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not Kiana Tom. She was on ESPN back in the day. I uh I tweeted it everybody. Kiana James. At Kiana James underscore WWE. She needs a better Twitter handle. This is almost as bad as Vinny's. F O underscore V Ver He Ver High. That's, I don't know how to. Football Outsiders, folks. The uh, new guide for the season that is out now. But if you go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez, you can, in fact, watch the video. What's wrong? What's wrong with the NXT women's division featuring Kiana James? The greatest. The absolute greatest. I'm hoping that actually by the time this week is over, I will have spent 30 minutes talking about how great this segment was. Maybe we can both be happy and they'll team up uh, Tiffany and Kiana together and then they can actually go vying for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships at some point. I love when she talks about how uh, how how uh, her... Uh, her father, not her father, but Nikita Lyons father. Nikita Lyons. Her father yes. was a rock star and her mother a groupie. Groupie. And that that's why she says that's 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 that explains her vocabulary. Uh, they they cut to the shot of, of uh Nikita doing this just preposterous promo for the, the women's battle royal. You, and in the middle of the promo can you do any of the no, motions like she no. can? In the middle of the promo they cut to a shot of Kiana James watching and she's just got the the most incredible look of disgust on her face and they cut back. I loved this. I don't know if you guys understand my love for this segment. And then the Mm-mm. scowl at the end. She just scowls. I'll report back with my findings. She scowls. Incredible. It's incredible. Man. Anyway. Shaming that woman's mother for being able to know what the top of the tour bus ceiling looked like. You know what I mean? Just, just, Bro, just what do we low. need? What do we need Sasha and uh, Naomi back for when we got Kiana James that can move up and take that spot on the main roster? Grab that brass ring. Part of the woman's revolution now that Vince is gone. This person here says on the front page, Dwight Howard from the NBA was at the the <laughs> SummerSlam tryouts. Your thoughts? <laughs> Do well, you if know he who was, Dwight I Howard hope he is. ended up okay. <laughs> man, oh man! I hope he Long- didn't end up with a severe injury as a result of these tryouts. 
Actually, I could see Dwight Howard ending up with a severe injury because he's such a goofball doing something at one of these tryouts. But do you do you have any idea who this guy is? I've I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about him. Okay, he's six ten. He's been in. He's been. Oh a man, has he been hired yet? For, have well, they hired him yet? <laughs> but he's also played in the NBA for a long time. So even though he's six ten and in good shape, he's thirty six years old. So that could be you know. Well, bro, he hold on a second. Hold on a second. Thing. Listen. I don't know anything about Dwight Howard, but I've heard the name, okay? Yes. I'm sure my wife has heard the name Dwight Howard. She has not heard the name Omas. So if Dwight Howard is 6'10", and this guy says if he worked, he'd work like Omas, bro, he's already, if he can work like Omas, then you may Dude. as well get rid of Omas and bring in Dwight Howard. He can work better it, it than would actually Omas. Be, it would actually be a, a, an upward, because Omas is a, is a tall guy that doesn't work very well. At least Dwight Howard would be a tall guy that people know that can work Kind of Dwight you know, Howard was a very athletic big man. He was not obviously the size of an Omas or something like that, but guys the size of Omas usually in the NBA don't work well anyway. Shaquille O'Neal being his size was one of the great... Bro, know, Shaquille O'Neal had one of the best first matches I ever saw in my life. Well, and, it's, and then he disappeared in the back of an ambulance. We still have not gotten the answer to exactly what happened to, to Daddy Shaq. It was Shaq magic when he got out of the back of that thing when they opened it up. But Dwight Howard is, he's old, but I can guarantee you because he's such a good 36 ball, ain't old. Well, and he, <laughs> tell me about give me it, a, it. Give me a break, Grandpa. It, if he's if he's willing to do something, I would probably say give it a shot because the, look, the whole reason he did it is to cut the promo, and it's something that went viral, and that's great. Him not, but him being in WWE, that's not going to happen. But him making a special appearance at a time where they love people to make special appearances, hell yes. Why Omas is there other than his, the look of his size? I mean, that's it. You knew in developmental, you knew the day you signed him, he was not going to be. Big Show. I mean, that's always, to me, that's the guy that you look at and you go, do you have at least enough footwork to be the Big Show when he was younger? That obviously wasn't the case, and he can't do anything, and they don't use him like 911. So I would be glad to see Omas go and see basketball players like Dwight Howard and other guys, if they're going to do that type of thing, use those guys, because you'll get a lot more uh, attention for it as well, too. So this person here, it's actually Brandon in Portsmouth. He says, my Wrestling Observer Live prediction is writing on whether Theory successfully cashes in his briefcase or not. So for now, I am interested in whatever happens to Austin Theory at SummerSlam. Well, you, you, would, uh, you would be the winner now. But, bro, there's still, there's still five months left in this year. And a lot of crazy stuff can go down. So uh, don't get overconfident if uh, Theory successfully cashes in a briefcase and wins a title on... Can you see him cashing in and losing? Because I can. Especially the Howard, way he was played out on Monday. I got more on Dwight Howard. He <laughs> will be at SummerSlam, front row. Oh, there you go. Oh, man. Uh-huh. Oh, man. You know, I heard there were, you know, the tryouts were a disaster, but I heard they might sign a few people just because you kind of have to. I'm sure they had good. You, you can't sure start an NIL. Athletes. You can't start an NIL program and then, you know, after the tryout go, eh, they all suck. We didn't sign any of them. <laughs> You got to sign some people, even if they do suck. I mean, you can always, you know, ax them later, quietly. Well, that's how a lot of them will go if they end up getting signed up and then just disappear quietly off the uh, off the roster again. This person here says, "I'll be watching SummerSlam, Rampage, SmackDown, and maybe Ric Flair's last match." Hey, this person thinks Dwight could be uh, Seth's mystery opponent. I'd actually like to see that, to see if Seth could get a better match out of Dwight than he could get out of Omos, or the match that AJ tried to get out of Omos. Mm. Let's see. Brian, if Seth is looking for an opponent, any chance it could be Edge? Well, it could be Edge. That is possible. I don't like that at all. You know, Edge is coming back as the rated R superstar, which... At the time that that began was a, a heel gimmick, but, you know, it's nostalgia and everything. It'd be a babyface gimmick here, so it's possible. Well, who's going to save the day for Rey Mysterio? And I know in the, the history of WWE, nobody saves the day for Rey Mysterio, but it just makes too much sense for if Edge is going to come back, 
why would you do? I mean, to me, it's like that's like the Ziggler reason of, of facing Rollins. It's like, well, if Ziggler still got eyes on Theory, I can see him doing something to screw Theory over at some point during the show and not be tied in with Rollins. Conversely, I mean, flipping over to to this, I just. Edge should be the one to either avenge Ray because his son turned on him or be the one to make sure that Dominic doesn't turn and to go back and get some revenge on the guys who kicked him out of his own group. It just that to me to bring him back for any other reason, I think it would be a waste. This person here says, Brian, how would you feel if one of your daughters won the Texarkana title? You mean the Texarkana title they've been looking at on my mantle? Their their whole little lives. Uh oh. Why I'd feel exactly like Taz. I'd be a proud oh, yeah? father. What if they grew up and dressed like Becky Lynch coming out there? Well, if you if you were here, you'd realize that that would be an improvement over <laughs> what they wear on a regular day. Yeah, uh, you got independent you know, minded. Kids. I've always people have asked me for uh, people have asked me for years. You know, would you want your children to get into wrestling? And I always said, oh, God, no. Oh, no, I can't think of anything worse than that. And, uh, you know, as far as, as, you know, Paisley goes, I I would not want to see her in wrestling. But for Hanalei, I mean, I've pretty much at this point, like, you know, why not? Just why not? She uh... She may be the next Texarkana television champion at the rate that things are going. Might be better than the GCW Ultra Violence Deathmatch Championship that some kids may be looking to grow up with that apparently missed the whole deal about Wahoo McDaniels and Dusty Rhodes and how great they were and just went right to the blade. But uh, hopefully things work out well for everybody. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Well, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But Uh-oh. I'm going to try to watch a little bit of the G1 and uh, also some of the Stardom Five Star Grand Prix, which is kicking off this weekend. Yeah. But I want some stuff to talk to old Filthy Tom about on Monday. Tom's got another G1 block match coming up here after sadly suffering a defeat at the large hands of Lance Archer. So uh, he's he's off to the races, 0-1. Oh, mm. But, you know, it really honestly doesn't matter all that much because what really matters is win or lose at some he bring, point. He brings you home a At some Rivera point jacket. in the next uh-huh. year. That'd be yeah. cool, actually. But at some point in the next year, he will get to stand across the ring from Siri in one of these mixed tag matches. Oh my. And that's God. really all we're hoping for, right? Who cares about the G1? That, that's kind of true, yeah. That's well, as long as I mean, not that like maybe Micah's phone number. Maybe. But you know, other other than that, yeah. I mean, I I would be happy for him to do anything over there. Just remember to get Micah's phone number like I asked you to do, Tom, please. <clears throat> You're married. Because I want to have her on the show, is what I'd like. And your son is listening right now. Yeah. And you are a horrible father. He's not listening. He's watching some sort of death match, something or whatnot, so. Tell him not to not to gig. It's it's overrated. I'm tr- I'm I'm trying. Like I said, all that, that crockett I showed him uh, that said this is wrestling, son. And he went right for the blade. He he just saw everything, saw all that stuff, and went and went right for the blade. Well, I'm going right to Moe's for some fish and chips. So hey, thanks for listening, everybody. Have an exciting weekend. We'll be back uh, with a lot of shows, talking a lot of different things. So uh, WrestlingObserver.com is the place to go. Shows, newsletters, all sorts of great stuff. And that's it for this week. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.